Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCready, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCready. In this time of increasing madness, we cannot be those who are moved by any madness within us or outside of us in the world that we live in. We need to be those who become more stable sons, those who are more secure in Him, those who are readying themselves for the long-range work that God has put within them. I want to encourage you, my friends, listen soberly, listen responsibly, and respond to Him in these episodes as we continue here on Tent Talk with March Madness. Love you all. All right, here we go again, my friends. Now, though we may be saying this is March Madness, I want you to remember this. We are those who are being built by Him. God has a plan, my friends. And He means to have His people to be in oneness with Him. You can look all throughout history, my friends, and God has always been able to find those who would Let him be the God that he is that would allow him to do it his way. And though evil may run its course for a time, eventually God brings it down by the uh, accumulating and the cumulative uh, force of those who will be nonconformist, those who will not live in the status quo. They are not here to just maintain. Now that doesn't happen by magic. That happens by maturity. That doesn't happen by uh, chance or accident. It happens by abiding and adapting to his life within you. This is not for the faint of heart, my friends. So I want you to, to listen carefully. I want to remind you that I've said this a few times over the past, but I, I am going to interject it here because it's the word of God to me. And if I'm not mistaken, this was something that he spoke to me very, very strongly uh, back in about 2002. But he told me, he said, because I had just returned from Africa. And he told me, Nancy, there are three major temptations that are going to come against the sons of God in the years ahead. And oh, it continues to prove to be true. I could say that they are three seductions that will come. And the first one is, is to trust in our own goodness. He said, this is going to begin to escalate. This is going to begin to become uh, so uh, prominent, so pervasive that even my people, right, are going to be Begin to be overly impressed with their own goodness, their own skill, their own anointings as though they have anything separate from me. And they're going to begin to be seduced to come into that. And then it's going to try to keep them. See, everything of hell, my friends, and flesh and sin is always attempting to keep the sons separate from their abiding in the Father because that's where the harvest will be rich. That's where the power will right? To live and to function and to advance the kingdom is, is in our abiding in him. It's not from our own self-production. It's from him. And he said, the more that they become enamored with themselves and their own goodness, he said, the more distant they are from me. And because this had been true in my own life, Uh, back in 1995-96 at its zenith, I understood what he was saying to me and the deep preparation that would be necessary, that we must literally be detoxed off our own goodness, being impressed with the good side of self. So that was the first temptation, the first seduction uh, that he showed me that we would uh, get caught up in our own goodness. But my friends, we're called to live surrounded and crowned by His goodness. That's our only hope of any true and pure goodness as we share in His nature and in His goodness. 
The second was that we were going to be seduced and tempted to stand alone. In John 12, 24 and 25, Jesus is talking and he says that you can be alive, but if you do not go into the ground and die and then produce, then you remain alone. My friends, we are not those who are here to just have a good life and to stand alone. You see, that means you're just marking time, your status quo. You are maintaining. You think with just the passage of time that everything, you know, will be okay. And, you know, this is what uh, C.S. Lewis called chronological snobbery. Mm. You, you, you just are thinking that time's going to pass by and everything's going to be okay. Uh, and in the height of our pride, we completely misread or ignore or indifferent to what God's word has said. What he is saying is true. We are not those who are here to, to simply stand in our own goodness and stand alone. We are called to production. And it says that if we would but go into the ground and die to the form that we're in today, when a seed goes into the ground, it's the hard husk that dies. The form that it's in has to pass away and disintegrate so that the life, the fruit, what's actually inside the seed can break open, breaks then through the ground, comes up, produces, and goes on to produce. My friends, it is a scandal to be born of Christ and just simply stand alone. I'm compelled by his life within me to provoke you because I have been provoked by him and to provoke you that we cannot stand alone in the midst of madness. We cannot be those who are satisfied to just stand in our own destiny, our own life, our own everything just as one. No, there is a death that produces. These are Jesus' words. If it dies, it produces. This is a death that brings forth life. We cannot be those who simply want to maintain that we look out only for our own welfare. I've been studying as of late three men in the scripture, Nehemiah, Mordecai, and Abraham, where they spoke of the welfare of the people, the welfare of their nation. When Abraham was uh, tempted uh, by the king of Sodom, it's in Genesis 13 and 14. This is what king of Sodom, the devil, said to Abraham, the father of nations, He said, look, just keep the stuff. See, Abraham was coming back from war and he had all the stuff and he had all the people. And the enemy wanted to entice him. This is so true for leadership today to entice. And this is what he said to him. Mm. The ancient seductions is listen, just keep the stuff for yourself. Just give me the people. My friends, if we say we love the Lord, do we love his people? Do we love right people in the way that he does? Not enmeshed, not soulish, not by self-love that will actually begin to think that it loves people more than God does and will judge God harshly, you know, and will judge him as he is being cruel, right, and heighten itself above God. Hmm? No, a true love for the people, for the welfare of the nation and for the people to allow God to raise you up and shoot you out on whatever the assignment may be on his behalf. Are we identified with the father in this? Because Abraham told the king of Sodom, listen, I wouldn't take a shoestring from you lest it be said that you made me rich. I'm calling out people all across the board who have made deals with the devil, whether they realized it or not. We don't need his ways and his demonic principles to build the kingdom of God. God is raising up sons who will not have to be bribed or pampered or spoiled to be kept 
They will want to be kept by the Father. They want to remain in their oneness with Him. They count Him as their most precious prize and treasure. And then He can send them out because now they're trustworthy and they're glad-hearted and they're jealous for Him and they are producing and they're maturing because they refuse to stand alone in the midst of madness. When it's every man for himself. And any of us that thinks we're going to be brave just all by ourselves, we are deceived. We need the very life of Christ himself being matured within us for us to be able to live like him. To deny ourselves as the new man. Hmm? Did you know that? That is so powerful. That that could be a whole podcast episode. Hmm? So we don't want to trust in our own goodness. That's number one temptation. The second temptation is that you're going to stand alone. You're not going to be willing to go in the ground and be a producer where you could care for the welfare of many. And the third temptation is that we are going to be tempted to shrink back in gripping fear. The fear of being too radical, the fear of sacrificing too much, the fear of what will happen to us. We count our husk to be so precious, nothing should touch it nor break it. We're fighting for a life that we want to build on our own rather than valuing the life of Christ within us and remembering for what purpose it was that we were born, for what partnership was it that I was born. I was born for him. I was born for him. I exist for him and any other version of life that is constantly seeking to seduce us away must be outed and exposed for what it is. And I pray Holy Spirit would use this simple podcast, this simple episode to do so. My friends, we are in a long range plan that belongs to our father. We are not here for the short term. We are not here to trust in our own goodness and morality that will never accomplish the Father's will. We are not here to stand alone and only care about ourselves. We are here to go in the ground and let him be able to receive the full measure of whatever it is he has put within us by his means, by his processes, by his producing, and by his power and his great love. We are not here to shrink back in fawning fear and let the world dictate to us how we will live and threaten us if we do not comply. But my friends, we're also not here just to be um, rebels. I would venture to say we're pioneering and revolutionary. There are certain things God has shown me that I always hesitate greatly to share because I would rather hide them in my heart and intercede for them and labor towards them without making a big deal about the words that may describe them. But God is also pressing me in the moment to get ready. And therefore, I'm passing it on to you. My friends, we must have people who are fully engaged with him and he will produce a most stable crop of sons who will count it their absolute privilege for his sake and for those whom he loves. The welfare of the people, my friends, in the midst of madness. I can't be driven by the needs of people. I can be led by the Father, who is the greatest lover of people ever. That will suffice and satisfy. We, my friends... We, my friends, are the ones that God is calling to himself right now that he can literally prepare us. He is disillusioning us on all fronts so that we will come into the greatest reality ever, which is him. That we will begin to see that our identity in Christ is not another form of our own self-esteem. It's who we are, and we were born in this hour of history, according to the book of Acts, at such a moment, at such a time as this. In Esther, it says, do not be silent in this time. As I spoke of these men, of a Mordecai, 
and of Nehemiah. These were men that did not bow, and it was so that they could build what God was doing. They didn't look like they had favor in the beginning, but oh, yes, they did when their time was right. My friends, history is chocked full of sons who in their hour of history, no matter how mad it may have looked, they rose to the occasion because they gave themselves to the Father in private. Could it be said of us? Could it be said of us that we will throw off all the weights of independent living and we will gladly take on the restraint of the loving cords of kindness from our Father and let Him mature us now. Though we may walk as faceless, nameless, anonymous people, we will know in our hearts and in our spirit, man, we are serving our Father because He has served us in the person of His magnificent Son, Jesus Christ. I'm calling you to attention in the midst of madness. I'm calling you, O mighty sons. Let the Father have His way with you. Until next time, I love you all. I'm stepping in here at the very end of the episode today to encourage you to be with me at the Vault private online event that will occur Monday, April 8th, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. You'll be able to see on my social media, you'll be able to find uh, a registration link, and that's where you can get your ticket. If you were with me in the previous one, that's great. Come again. We'll go deeper in. But if this is your first time, your inaugural step into the vault, that's okay. You'll be able to take hold, uh, even if you haven't attended previously. And remember this, though it is a live event, and I prefer you to be there with me live, it is okay if you are not able to be live and you simply register so that you can receive the replay and have full replay access to uh, the recordings, to the materials. So whether you can be there live or not, get registered, get your ticket, and be with me on Monday, April the 8th, because I will have returned from the UK by then and will be preparing to head to Paraguay. So it's a good time because I'm opening up the vault to all that he's put within me over the years, my friends, but even the fresh and the new that is coming as I am learning more and more how to live as a load-bearing person. But my friends, remember this. The vault really opens because he's the treasure and it's him. It's him that we're receiving of and walking with. I hope to see you there at the vault, April 8th, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Get your tickets, get registered, and let's go together. Love you all.